Hey everybody, welcome back to 8 Byte. Uh, sorry I missed you last week, it was just a bit of an off week so I didn't do much filming. Um, but I'm back, and I've got a, a hopefully interesting episode. I'm going to be making pâte choux, and if you're not familiar with pâte choux, it is the dough that's used to make cream puffs, profiteroles, eclairs, crawlers, churros. It's just this really neat dough that when you bake it, or it hollows out, and in churros case you fry it. But, um, yeah, I've been making cream puffs today, so I'm just going to fill with some whipped cream, sweetened cream, chantilly cream, and yeah, but I'm going to try it two ways. I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to try it with the regular flour to see how that goes, but I'm also going to try it in a gluten-free flour, because I've used the gluten-free flour before in baking, and it works okay. Sometimes it leaves like a weird sandy texture. I don't know how to explain it exactly, but um, I want to see how it holds up in a pâte choux. So, um, yeah, pâte choux two ways. Regular flour and gluten-free flour. Pretty simple recipe, there's not much that goes into it. Uh, uh, but yeah, so without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so for this recipe, all that you need is one cup of water. And there are recipes out there that say to use a cup of milk, or even you can use half milk, half water. Um, but for today, I'm just going to use the water. And then you also need a teaspoon of sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, one stick of butter, one cup of flour, and four eggs. And when I do the uh, gluten-free recipe, I'm going to take out the gluten or the gluten flour and replace it for one cup of one-for-one gluten-free um, baking flour. And that's it. So we're gonna start to put it together now. Yeah. So in a medium saucepan, you want to combine the water, the butter, which I cut up into cubes to help it melt quicker, the salt, and the sugar. Then you want to stir this over medium high heat until it all melts together. Once it's completely melted, take it off of the heat and add your flour all at once. And then you want to quick stir this together until it forms a nice dough lump and it kind of peels away from the sides. If it still seems too wet, you can always sit it back on the heat and stir it around to get rid of that extra moisture. But we're almost where we need to be. So something like this, a nice dough peels off the sides nice and easy. And now we're ready for the next step. Okay, so now that we have our dough all mixed together, we're gonna transfer it into a mixing bowl. Get that little extra dough off the side. And you wanna let it sit in the mixing bowl for a little while till it cools down slightly because we're gonna add the eggs next and we don't want the eggs to cook in there at all. So let it cool down for a couple minutes and then we're gonna add the eggs one at a time. So now that our dough is done cooling, we're going to add the eggs one at a time and mix it thoroughly after each egg. Uh, you can use stand mixer, hand mixer, fork, whatever you like to use to mix it. And you're just going to do it one at a time uh, to make sure it incorporates properly and you get the right consistency. So here we go. I got a double yolk in that one. It's happened before, but I got it on camera. A double yolk in that egg. Woohoo! <laughs> Alright, so I'm not sure if that'll change things, but uh, neat to see it nonetheless. So you also want to mix it. Add the next egg. See if it's in there, double yolk. Nope, just one. And mix this one in. The dough almost kind of separates as you mix in the eggs, which is supposed to happen. Just keep mixing it and it'll come together again. Alright. 
So there we have all four of our eggs mixed into, into our batter. And it should have a slow run. Yeah, so it's a little slow run. And it's got a nice glossy sheen to it. And that's what you're looking for. And the next step is going to be um, piping it out. Now, usually people do this um, with piping bags and tips. If you don't have that kind of stuff, just use a Ziploc bag and cut off the tip. Same thing. We're just going to make little mounds of dough onto our parchment lined baking sheets. And then it's going to go in the oven. So I'm going to get my bags ready and start to pipe these out. Uh, so for the cream puffs I'm making, I'm going to use the Ateco 806 round tip. Um, it's just a little circle opening. That's why if you don't have the tips, you can always cut the corner off of a Ziploc bag and just use that. If you're making like a, um, a crawler or a churro or even an eclair, they usually have the zigzaggy tips like these. And it's just to give that rib texture that they're so iconic with those things. Um, but so cream puffs, profiteroles, the little cream puffy mounds of dough, just use a circle tip or cut off the corner of a bag, quick and simple. Okay, so I've got about half of the dough in the bag, and now you just gotta pipe them out into whatever size you want. The first time I ever made cream puffs, I made them Mondo cream puffs. When they baked, they were about the size of a softball. I don't know if I'm gonna go that crazy with it today, probably more closer to an actual size, inch and a half. Um, but yeah, just it's preference for that point, just kind of mound it how big you want it, keep a little space so that way when they expand slightly, they won't bump into each other. And if you ever have little peaks at the top of your dough, just get your finger a little wet, you can dab it down and it smooths it right out. So it's going to keep going, filling up the whole tray, a couple trays actually, with the pro pat -shoe dough. And it's going to go into an oven. Um, there's all different ways to bake these. The way that I was taught, and I'm going to do it this way, is you put it at a really hot oven to start with. So I've got 425. And after about 10 minutes, I'm going to turn it down to 375. But it's important, never, never, never open the door when it's baking. Because then all the hot air escapes and they don't rise as much as they should. And then I'm going to let them bake at 375 for another, I think, 10 to 15 minutes. So here's our first tray. I'm going to pop these in the oven. I'm going to do the other tray. And then while these are cooking, I'm going to work on the uh, gluten-free batch. Alright, so these guys were in the oven for at 425 for 15 minutes. Then I turned on the heat to 350 and left them in there for another 5-10 minutes. And now I want to vent them with either like a sharp little knife or something else to kind of help the steam escape without them getting soggy. Or to, pre to prevent them from getting soggy, excuse me. So kind of stab on the inside. Let some of that steam come out through those holes that you're making. And so they seem to like not have risen too much. So I might adjust the eggs when I do the uh, gluten-free guys. Uh, but these do look good. So now we're going to let those cool. And I will see you after all the cream puffs are baked. And I will be making the whipped cream next. Which is like a moment for you guys, but it'll be, it'll be a little while for me. So I will see you guys soon. Um, okay, so this is the gluten-free recipe. This is the exact same amount of um, water, butter, sugar, salt, and flour. And whereas it made a dough last time, the gluten-free flour is making more of a paste, uh, kind of a lumpy paste. So I'm not sure how to fix that. Um, and if I can't fix it, then I'm going to have to scrap this because <laughs> this will not make a cream puff. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to point that out that gluten-free flour in making pate choux does not work the same as flour flour. Um, let me think about what to do for this to fix it. And if I can, I will. If I can't, then we'll just have the regular cream puffs. 
So I was not able to save this. It is still quite pasty and just not right at all. Um, I don't want it to go to waste though. The ingredients in there are still the base for a, a pate de choux. Uh, so I'm going to try adding eggs into that and then I'm going to try putting it into a little cake pan and bake it off that way. Uh, this past Easter I tried a pate de choux recipe where I didn't pipe it out. I kind of spread it into a, a baking dish and let it bake that way. I had seen a recipe for it years and years ago. I couldn't find the recipe again. Um, but I'm going to try to save this that way by just kind of making it, baking it in a dish instead of piping it out and see how it comes out that way. Um, again, you'll see the results when I do, but for now, that's what the plan is. Okay, so here's where I'm at with things. The uh, gluten-free cake concoction is in the oven baking. It's not rising at all, so it's going to be like a little dense cake, I suppose. I don't know. The gluten-free flour does not work on pate de choux. So, I learned that today. Hope you did too. Um, then the other guys, the ones that I made first, the gluten, the ones with gluten. Uh, the first batch, they kind of got a little soft, so maybe they were slightly underbaked, but they still taste amazing. I love the way pate de choux tastes. Um, so here's the first batch. And the second batch, let's see if I could adjust that. I, um, or not batch, but tray rather. I left it in the oven longer. I had it in there for 425 degrees um, at 15 minutes, then 350 for like 20, 25 minutes. And they have a firmer shell, but I also cut them in half as soon as they were done instead of just poking a hole to kind of keep their cratery shape. And they, they do blast out a lot of steam, so maybe there's just too much steam in there when I made that first tray. Um, but yeah, so there is where I'm at with these guys. And so the next thing I'm going to do is the whipped cream. And it's also called Chantilly cream. And uh, the recipe for that isn't really any exact recipe. You whip your cream, and then it's going to get thicker. And as it starts to get thicker, add your granulated sugar and your vanilla and just keep mixing it until it gets light and fluffy and go to it by taste. I like things sweeter so I add more sugar. Some people don't like that sweet so they don't add as much sugar. It's all preference for there. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to make my whipped cream, Chantilly cream, and then I'm going to make some cream puffs. And then I will see at the outro with the finished cream puffs and with the gluten-free cake thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, so see you soon. Um, one more quick update. That is the gluten-free pate de choux cake thing. The corners are rising up and the sides slightly, still sunk in the middle, but just wanted to show that looks rather interesting. Um, so I'll let that go for a little bit longer. The top hasn't really changed color yet, but uh, yeah, just wanted to show how that's looking because it's interesting. All right, see you soon. <laughs> okay, so on the right is the pate de choux cake bread square thing. I don't know what to call it exactly. Um, it was in the oven for about an hour. It's still still quite warm, but I want to try it and I'm <laughs> impatient with food. Uh, and then here are the cream puffs. I like to dust them with a little bit of powdered sugar. Just nice little sweetness on top. Um, so yeah, I'm going to cut into this. Well, no, first I want to dust with sugar. I like to dust sugar. So. A little bit of sugar and I cut a little vent in the middle there just so it could hopefully get some of that steam out and not come too moist. Alright, that looks good. Just a little dusting of powdered sugar. Now we're going to cut into this and see what it looks like. And again, this is gluten free so it should taste the same, just have a different texture, I suppose. I don't know. Okay, he's slowly coming out. Alright, so again, I made this at Easter, but with gluten. And same kind of thing. The middle is, it's almost like a custardy bread. It's like a dense... Yeah, it's hard to explain exactly what that is, but it, it, it's good. It tastes good. Um, I'm going to put this on my plate, 
quick change the camera view and do my outro. Um, so there you go, some padded shoe. Fairly simple to make, just kind of time consuming. Um, I did it with the uh, gluten flour, regular flour, and with the gluten free flour. Um, I have tried these before and I've had them today. I snack on them, they're delicious, I love them. But for, for the show's sake, let me try this guy first, the uh, gluten free. Hmm. Yeah. It's that. It's good. It's good. <laughs> um, how to describe that though? It is a little eggy just because they use three eggs in there, but it's it's really tasty. And that little bit of sugar on top. And I said earlier that gluten-free flours can be kind of sandy in texture. I don't get that with this. This one is pretty smooth. It's yeah, it's like a custard bread. I don't know. It's it's really good though. Hmm. And of course, cream puffs. <laughs> ah. Hmm. For the cream. I did one cup of cream, two tablespoons sugar, a teaspoon of vanilla, and it's really good. Mmm, I love padded shoe so much. It's just so light and the flavor's delicious. Then when you add the sweeteners to it, the cream or whatever, so good. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, so, padded shoe. Fun to make, fun to eat. A little tricky to work with. I was I always have some issues with it, but it is still good. Um, so yeah, even the gluten-free stuff is good. So thank you guys for watching this episode of 8Bite. Um, yeah, until next time, I will see you guys later. Bye, everybody. Bye.